What's up, y'all? This is Henny. You know I had to give you my input on these. These are the AirPod Maxes. Had these about a week and uh, had to tell you my perspective on these as it relates to as a music producer, songwriter, somebody who might want to use these expensive headphones for not just leisurely activities as listening to music, watching shows, but maybe doing some type of work with them. Is it possible? Should you do it? Should you invest? Let's talk about it right now. Let's go! <laughs> So yeah, I've had these for uh, almost a week now, um, and I've been playing around heavily with them, trying them out in every possible way that I possibly could uh, to see if they were worth it for, you know, somebody like myself who is a creative who likes to do video editing, music production. I had to see. You know, are these worth the $550 price tag for these types of things? And honestly, let's cut to the chase. No, they are not for these types of activities. For music production, for video editing, yes, you are paying for the brand, you're paying for the lifestyle. You are paying to rock these on your head and say, you know what? Yes, I have AirPod Maxes as well. Uh, it's a flex, let's be real. You're paying for really good sound quality. You're paying for an amazing finish, amazing build quality. You know, you're paying for all the things that every other YouTuber's talked about when it comes to these headphones. Uh, you know, it's just Apple's way of telling you, you know, we can create incredible products that sometimes have an incredible price tag, but they are worth it for those things. For watching content using spatial audio, listening to music having such a very wide sound, a great, warm mids and it doesn't distort it doesn't sound crazy when you put these on they sound great but a lot of times for us as musicians for us as video editors we need things to sound a little bit more flat and we need things to be a little bit more convenient for uh the way we use different uh peripherals right whether it's a musical interface or some type of audio interface anything that you need to do to make sure you have the cleanest flat sound to be able to edit the way you need to these just don't give you that uh for the price but yeah they are still really really good but i want to tell you about the other headphones that i use in this space right for years my go-to headphones have been these right these are the audio technica ath m50s i've had them in numerous colorways and i tell you they've always really held it down when it came to music production editing mixing arranging sequencing these have been my go-to's but yes they don't have any smart features you know they are corded they're wired you know um, they don't need a whole bunch of amplification to be able to work clearly they just get the job done at a small price uh usually between 99 and 150 dollars and for anybody looking for the all-time uh best headphone to get under 200 bucks for these types of features you know mixing arranging your overall music production I would always say these, the Audio-Technica ATH M50s. Now, if you wanna go even bigger on that type of sound, right, where you just have a corded setup and you need something that's gonna give you really, really clear sound, that's where you step up to what they call audiophile type headphones. And these are my hi fi Men HE500s that I've had for, sheesh, almost eight years. And when I bought these, I think these were almost $700 and these were incredibly great at sounding very clear, right? They need a lot of amplification. You need a right type of amp, right type of headphone amp to really boost the sound. But when you can get the sound boosted in these, they sound incredible, but they are heavy as hell and they don't feel good on your head for a long period of time. But if you're listening for critical things in your mixes, critical things in uh, the way you sequence stuff, or if you really wanna listen to music in a critical way, you step up to some type of audiophile type headphones. That's these, right? And then this year I got these, right? I've talked about them in my last video, but these are the Shure Aeonic 50s, right? They give you music production style quality sound, but they also have the smart features, right? They have the noise cancellation. They have the Bluetooth wireless. They have, you know, all of these transparency modes 
and able to do things like have an LDAC built in where you can plug in a USB type C cable, plug it directly into your iPad or your MacBook at, from USB C to USB C. They also have a 2.5 to 3.5, you know, millimeter uh, headphone jack where you can plug it in to your normal. Uh, audio interface and they sound really really good these have been the headphones that i've used pretty much all year since i've got them that's why i'm giving one of these away from my last video in this video yeah it's time to give away these aonic 50s that i talked about in my last video let's roll that let me show you exactly hold on let me hit record uh boom let me show you who the winner is from this as i do it live let's go let's pick a winner G Brown, my man G Brown has won himself. As y'all can see, can you see that? My man G Brown, you have won yourself. The Aonic 50s, I'm going to be sending these to you. Congrats. And shout out to everybody who uh, has, you know, been a supporter of mine over the years and allowed me to do things like this, give back to y'all. So it's been an amazing journey so far. Let's keep talking about these headphones. So yeah, when I compare my Aonic 50s that I've been using all year to these new AirPod Maxes, I really look at the things that I would need when I'm on the go. Because, you know, when I'm here at the house and I have everything at my disposal, I can easily go in between specific headphones if I need something a little bit more high fidelity, if I need something a little bit more, you know, clear listening. And usually... As an audio engineer, as a music producer, you're going to want to listen to your mixes and your sounds on as many types of monitors and headphones as possible. That's why I have so many. And I mean, you know, that's just where we're at. When we talk about sound quality, just bare bones sound quality between something like the Shures and the AirPod Maxes. The AirPod Maxes just have, you know, it's, it's, it's computational. So it's the way that it can put music everywhere, the way that it can do the spatial audio the way that everything sounds so clear and crisp and everything just sits right, that's what you get from these. So from a user, from a listener's perspective, these kill it every time, right? But if I'm trying to mix and I'm trying to figure out, should I crank the highs up? Should I turn down the lows? Should I put an EQ on this? Should I do a low pass or a high pass filter on that? You know, should I add extra v reverb? I'm gonna need more of a flatter sound and um, you know something that I can really use with uh, my audio interface. And these just work great because I have multiple ways that I can connect these to you know my system, whether it's USB-C to USB-C or 2.5 uh, millimeter headphone jack to, to a regular you know headphone out. All I'm saying is when I had to pay $35 for this cord and I listened to the music back and forth between this headphone and this headphone, and this headphone and this headphone um i could tell you that for music production i didn't i don't need these for that but these things sound so good and there's such a fashion statement that most people are buying it just for that we've heard many people say that and that's the case with these airpod maxes they just sound crazy good and they you're gonna pay for it the same way that I love Leica, the same way that I'm wearing very expensive t-shirts. They just get the job done for their specific task. All in all, you can't go wrong if you have the budget for the AirPod Maxes. But if you don't, and you're trying to figure out what's the best headphone for a specific case, whether you need it for songwriting, music production, video editing, you know, that critical listening where you need to be EQing and doing other things to your mixes, you know, uh, if you don't need the smart features, I would go here with the Audio Technicas. If you're traveling and need smart features, maybe I check out the Shure Aonic 50s because these really, really do sound great. And, you know, even from a noise cancellation perspective, they are definitely not the best in the business. I've used them in loud environments. They really can muffle that sound a lot, but you still get a lot of good features, smart and non-smart, from these headphones. One of the biggest things that I did not like about these AirPod Maxes is the fact that you couldn't use them in passive mode, meaning if they were all the way off, you couldn't just plug in the cable and just have them, you know, be used at any time. They always have to have some type of charge and, um, you know, they will always have their smart features enabled. That's with these. Sometimes you just want that clean signal coming through 
coming from your audio interface or your headphone DAC or whatever you're using straight to your headphones. And um, you know, you can do that in a non-smart way with these headphones. But if you do have a little bit of a, more of a budget and you want more the best of both worlds, you get these for a hundred and something bucks and you get these for maybe under 200 and now you have your best setup for traveling on the go, taking calls, doing virtual stuff, having spatial audio and everything. You have the AirPods Pro and you have the ATH M50s. I would suggest this all day to be able to do multiple things for music production, songwriting, all of that, and then casual listening and the convenience of these being in your pocket at all times. This is an amazing combo that rivals these and definitely gives you more than these. But sometimes you just want the best of the best for everything. And um, these are the best wireless headphones that I've ever used. And that's what you get with that price tag. But I'll tell you this, for those like me, you're going to need something else than these AirPods Max for your critical listening. And um, hey, you know, I'm hoping that maybe in an updated version of these, they'll have a way that you can maybe just flatten the sound and use it passively, a way that, you know, um, if you, you don't necessarily need this case, this case doesn't truly bother me, but it, it does make me think about the durability um, of these with this, you know, this mesh top. And I've seen, you know, people talk about how much you have to baby these um, to make sure that you, you don't scratch them, scuff them, put a mark in these, whatever. So it is what it is. I just wanted to give you my perspective on these AirPods as it relates to music creatives, somebody like myself who might be looking at them like, yo, can I use them for that? And I definitely wouldn't recommend it for your, your everyday music production, your everyday video editing, those critical audio listening type situations where you need to get you know, everything tuned the right way. But let me know your thoughts. Talk to me about uh, what, you, what you're thinking about. Have you picked these up? Are you in the market for some headphones? Do you need any more recommendations? Hit me up. You know, I'll always be glad to uh, reach back out to you. And I hope you guys have a merry, merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Anything that you're celebrating, just be grateful that you're able to still celebrate it with those that you love, even if you got to do it virtually. Take care, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Hit him out!